You can tell when you meet him that you're in the presence of a very special person. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and he's my best friend. He'll quote a scripture right off the top of his head like it's like the back of his hand. Hallelujah! Come on, y'all give God some praise! Hallelujah! I want to see you stop your feet and clap your hands! He can speak on levels that the young can associate with as well as the old. He's not afraid. As long as we got a God who can help, we need not worry. My name is Minister Ezekiel Stoddard. I'm 11 years old, and I'm a servant for God. I'm talking about Jesus, Jesus, oh, a wonderful child, Jesus. Minister Ezekiel, the service is about to start. Are you ready to come out? Yes. When I was about seven years old, God spoke to me. Wait in the water. He was saying, son, I want you to do my will. I want you to preach the gospel. I can't describe what the voice sounded like, but it was the voice from God, because when does man come by and tell you, write a sermon, an eight-page sermon, I'll give you everything. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this day. It brings you a good feeling when God steps in. It's like a brighter day. The sun is shining, kids are playing, having a bicycle race. It's like a different atmosphere changed when God stepped into my life. He'll take a Bible, a, a Bible dictionary, a commentary, and he will sit down and study and connect. I think the biggest thing that impressed me the most was that his knowledge of the Word, which is really a critical state when it comes to preaching as far as I'm concerned. I came to tell you about Jesus. A child is now born. A child chosen by God is born to save his people. For he sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. Speaking about Jesus. Now let me take this a little deeper. When this child was born, it shifted the atmosphere. It started a new beginning. Come on and say amen. 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 When I see Ezekiel expounding in the pulpit, he has a different demeanor and he's firm and he's assured about what he's doing. To be able to expound on the word takes courage, takes knowledge, and it takes God's spirit dwelling within that person. And when I prepare my sermons, I like to keep it quiet so I can hear God speaking to me because a, a lot of times Satan really tries to, you know, make noise and cause things to happen to get my mind off God. What I would do, I would pray and I would meditate and I would listen to the voice of God. And what he tells me, he gives me a certain scripture, he gives me a certain title, and he gives me things to write down in between. And everything that God says, you just gotta keep on writing, don't stop, just keep on writing until God takes a break. I ask that everybody come to the altar real quick. Ezekiel, his witness, his testimony was very inspiring. I would have him come preach whenever he's available. How many 11-year-old preachers are ordained? First of all, ordained means to be set apart. That means you're called out from the ministry and you're even called out from among other ministers that have not been ordained. I know men uh, my age that have been in the ministry for 10, 15 years and have not gotten ordination yet, they haven't been ordained. You feel like praying for some people? Even at the age of six, Minister Ezekiel wanted to pray. He had a heart for the people, to pray for the people. He has such a tender heart. Father, I pray for Father right now. You have a reason for this woman to still be here today, hallelujah. I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. God, pour into her like you've never done before, hallelujah. Use her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal her right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If I didn't know Ezekiel, I would be skeptical. I think it was Nightline showed a list of young preachers that started out like this, even younger, and they investigated and found out that some of those children were being used by their parents to make money. So you understand the skepticism. So I had a long talk with Ezekiel. I said, do not be offended because someone is skeptical. They have a right to be. Some people are just concerned. My first strong role model in my life was my stepfather, Pastor Vasconcellos Smith.
when a strong male steps in and really take time to say, son, I want you to come over here and we're gonna talk about some things. I really appreciate what he has done in our lives. I really thank God for him because without him and God, we wouldn't have made it this far. Just take it on to the Lord in prayer and watch him work a miracle cause the Lord will do great things. I did not want my children to hurt like I have hurt. I, as a young girl, have been raped, and I've had my entire family turn their back on me at a very young age. Amazing grace. At the age of 14, I was homeless. In my church, they helped me. They gave me the backbone that I could make it. It was the, the grounding of the Word of God that helped me get this my life. And I found salvation. I found Jesus Christ. And I wanted my children to be saved. And so the music that we're singing, some of the music I've held for over 20 years. Just take it on to the Lord and pray and watch and work a miracle. Upon having children, I shared those songs with our children. And from that point on, our children began singing those same songs. Great things for you. I really love my mom. I would die for her right now if somebody would threaten her. I've had an uh, altercation before when somebody had talked about my mom. A lot of children today are missing God in their lives. Sometimes kids pick on me of my belief and faith in Christ Jesus, but it hasn't changed my mind about anything. As you can see, I'm still preaching the word. Because I want every child to know who God is. I want every child to prosper. So what I'm saying to everybody now, and especially the parents, is that you need to get your child involved in Christ. That's what I want to say. Come on, I need you to stand to your feet and say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I need you. Hallelujah. Jesus, I want you. I can't go no further without you. Hallelujah. Without you, I wouldn't be nowhere. Hallelujah. Because the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. You change into a different gear when the presence of God comes over you. I can't control. It's just the spirit of God coming on me. And I shall not walk. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He shall heal me from all of my enemies. Love your enemies. Love them that persecute you. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord some praise. I believe that Ezekiel was called to make a great impact and hopefully win some souls. You know, Jesus, he never stood in one place. I would really like to be an evangelist, you know, to travel all around the world. That's what I want my future to be like. I see myself at a podium preaching to a lot of people, a couple of million, and I can see myself telling them what Peter said, repent ye and believe the gospel. My hands stretched out wide, reaching up, reaching up to the sky. I, sometimes I have dreams about it, and when I dream about it, it's amazing, because when I wake up, sometimes I feel like I'm at that time right now. But then sometimes I realize <laughs> I'm still 11. I think in my dream, I'm, I'm like 20 or 30, and it gives me that feeling that I can push forward. My name is Minister Ezekiel Stoddard, and you're watching Prodigies. You're watching Prodigies. You're watching, you're watching Prodigies. You're watching, you're watching. You're watching, you're watching Prodigies. You're watching, you're watching. Yeah.